Windbound's third DLC has released much earlier than I and many others had thought, and oh my god, it hits the mark spot on. The Loathing DLC brings us new enemies, bosses, items, combat moves and mechanics which will change the course of the game forever, and I am really excited to see where the game goes from here. Windbound is truly starting to feel like the peaceful yet unforgiving title that it's meant to be, and I love it. So let's dive in and take a look at all the new content. For the rest of this video to make sense, let's start with the most important part of this DLC. Enemies of Kara's ancestors can now appear on corrupted islands and will infect the creatures on the island too. While the enemies pose a threat, they are not too terribly difficult to take down with basic combat moves, more on that in a minute. The enemies come in three classes, Forsaken Warrior, Shield Bearer and Trickster. The Forsaken Warrior is a simple goon that will attack at a short range with its corrupted blade. If you fire an arrow at it, it will try and dodge out of the way. Dodging forward and left or right is an easy way to avoid the attacks, but it is best defeated with the new parry ability. Pressing circle will have Kara swing her spear up and to the left, and with the right timing you will be able to briefly stun the warrior and have plenty of time for a counter attack. The Forsaken Shield Bearer is an unforgiving brute that remains protected during battle with its huge shield. Bone and metal tipped weapons will not pierce the shield, nor can you deflect any attacks that it will throw at you. In a similar fashion to the Gorehorn, the Shield Bearer will do a melee attack when you are up close and charge at you if you are far away. When it does a melee attack, dodge forward and left to be on the opposite side of the shield and it will be vulnerable from the back. If it charges, dodge either directly left or back and left to stay away from the shield and land an attack. The new dodge attack is the absolute best way to beat these guys. The dodge attack will allow you to strike back right out of a dodge nice and quickly. The Forsaken Trickster is a fast moving dual wielding foe using speed and agility combined with a ranged attack to defeat Kara. Up close, the Trickster will strike with fast sword attacks. If you are successful in parrying just one, you will break the combo and be able to strike back. But fail and you will be struck by all the attacks, costing you a lot of HP. But the Trickster will often try to keep distance between it and Kara, charging up a ranged attack. This attack fires a spot of corruption at Kara, and like other piles of corruption, if you stay near it, it will gradually reduce your max HP until you can cleanse the corruption. While the Trickster charges this attack, you can charge up the new lunge attack and release before it can fire. You will deal massive damage and be on the other side of it, and potentially land a second hit. The Forsaken will all drop a material called Spectral Residue. This is going to be your bread and butter for the new item, so make sure you have defeated plenty of them. The Spectral Spear and Arrows can be crafted from stick spears and arrows using Spectral Residue. These weapons will deal additional damage to corrupted enemies and are capable of smashing the crystal barriers on Nautilus Towers. An absolute must have during a new playthrough in the Loathing DLC. Spectral Residue can also be used in some new potions. Drinking a Spectral Stimulant will immediately restore a large amount of HP to Kara. A Cleansing Cordial will remove some of the effects of the corruption. This potion is probably your most important since you will most likely be corrupted quite frequently. If you find them hard to craft, remember that your HP and hunger are fully restored to max upon entering the crossing. The Draft of Divine Defiance will defend Kara from the corruption and reduce the effect of it for a long period of time. Remember you can increase the duration of this potion using the Sea Witch's Hat introduced in DLC 1. During your adventure, you can unlock recipes for ancient runes that will give Kara unique abilities when held. As long as these items are in your inventory, they will take full effect. The Mark of the Scorpion has Kara's HP drain while charging a ranged weapon, but the arrow will deal a much larger amount of damage on a successful hit. Definitely useful if you've collected enough health upgrades for it. The Mark of the Martyr will absorb degradation damage from all weapons that Kara uses, and the Mark will be destroyed when fully degraded. Being able to keep up a supply of these can save you useful resources like metal and residue. The Mark of Punishment will make Kara's melee attack do increased damage for each hit that she lands, but the same will apply to enemy weapons on her too. The Mark of Patience will increase the damage that Kara deals on her next hit as she deflects or dodges attacks. As Kara learns new attacks, she will be able to craft Ancestral Masks which will enhance her new abilities. The Forsaken Mask of Countering increases the parry timing window and damage dealt on counterattack. I would recommend this as the default parry timing window is really slim. The mask will allow for a much more generous window, so if you can't think of something to wear in its place, this is your best bet. Cleo's Mask of Graceful Dodging lowers the stamina cost for dodging and increases the damage output of the dodge attack. In my opinion, this item is easily counterpicked since it isn't very hard to just reset between attacks and allow your stamina to recharge. I mean, the dodge attack damage is nice, but it's not going to make a huge difference. Kor's Mask of Mighty Lunging reduces the stamina drain when lunging and increases Kara's melee damage. If you're fine with the stamina cost of dodging and the default parry window, this mask is your best option. With the overall increased melee damage, you're going to make short work of most enemies and bosses. There is one more mask, however I'm going to count it as a spoiler and we'll talk about it later in the video. From Chapter 3, you will be faced with a boss after collecting all the Nautilus keys but before heading into the crossing. One of the bosses is Kor the Undefeated. 
Kaur's attacks are similar to that of a shield bearer and cannot be parried under any circumstance. Along with the standard combo of swing attacks and the lunge, Kaur has an added shockwave attack. He will stand still and ready his club to slam it down and create a shockwave straight at Kara. The attack is pretty obvious and easy to dodge, and your best bet at counterattacking will be the lunge. You can create the lunging mass before you've defeated Kaur, so if you can, try and use this. If not, the Night Stalker hood will allow for quicker dodging and you can start charging the lunge earlier. Another boss you will have to fight is Cleo the War Dancer. Cleo is similar to the Forsaken Trickster, with the added abilities of being ruthless and able to spawn in one Forsaken to assist him in the fight. Using the lunge to bypass the corruption shot from him works here too, and since he cannot be parried, the dodge attack will be useful against his melee attacks. Like Kaur's mask, you can craft Cleo's mask before encountering him, and you will find that his own mask is effective against him too. Throughout Kara's journey, you will encounter a strange dark spirit girl standing beside a campfire, and she will walk away when you approach her. At the end of chapter 5, this girl reveals herself to be Inara the Godslayer, the one who has been guiding Kara around the islands. Her weapons consist of the Godslayer's spear and the Godslayer's bow, weapons that Kara cannot obtain. She also possesses the same abilities as Kara. Yes, she can lunge and dodge attack too. Overall, Inara is very powerful, being able to summon more reinforcements than Cleo and Kaur, able to litter the area with loathing, and very agile, just like Kara. She will dodge most attacks, but is vulnerable right after a lunge, during the Godslayer bow attack, and while summoning reinforcements. Upon Inara's defeat, you will receive Inara's Mask of Divine Protection, which is basically a Gorehorn figurehead, but for Kara. During combat, she will manifest a shield that will fully negate the damage of a single attack. This item is a key item, meaning that it will not take up an inventory slot and it will carry over to future New Game Plus files. And that just about does it for all the new content added in the Loathing update. Personally, I love this update since it has made Windbound into the game it is always meant to be, proving that Kara will stop at nothing to be able to uncover the secrets of her past. Thankfully, this update has made the up close and personal achievement possible once again, so if you want to see my video on that, the link is down below. While it was recorded during DLC 1, all the strategies covered are still viable in today's Windbound, and the advice I've given you in here will fill in the gaps. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if there's any video ideas you have, please drop them down below. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next one.